Three Biggest No-Contact Mistakes The no-contact rule is a very effective way of showing your ex that you will be fine without them, and if they want to get back together, they have to be the one who makes the first step. Basically, it is a way of you taking control of their relationship and your emotions. It is most effective when done for a month straight, although many people who share their success stories with us have said it took even longer than five to six weeks as well. It is all very personal, and it largely depends on the individual relationship and the situation. Now, while that may sound easy and simple to follow, trust me, there are many mistakes you can make during this time. This is why we're here. I'll talk about the three biggest mistakes you can unknowingly do and ruin all the progress you've made with your ex during the no contact rule. Number one, breaking the rule too soon. This is especially bad if you have told your ex you will give them 30 days or six weeks, and then they text you earlier than that and you reply, or even worse, you are the one who texts first. This shows them that you will always be the one to chase them and they gain control over you even more. Many people break this rule most often, which is why it is first on this list. When you say to yourself that you will go 30 days without contacting your ex in order to make them miss you, you have to stay consistent with your decision. Otherwise, they will have started missing you and thinking about you while still considering whether they should give you a second chance or not. But then you text them and come off as desperate, resulting in pushing them away. Number two, replying eagerly. Remember that you have to keep it cool for a little while, even after the no contact ends. Firstly, wait for them to make the first move. And when you receive your ex's text, wait for at least an hour before replying. Keep it cool as if you're talking to a distant friend, polite, but cool. When the conversation ends, wait for them to contact you again for the second time. And if they do, this is a sure sign that your ex is chasing you and the no contact worked. This time you can be more open with them and show that you are glad you are talking again. You can even set a date to see each other and that is great. However, you should wait for them to mention it because otherwise if you propose and they say no, you have lost control over the situation again. So remember, with a no contact, it is all about your ex chasing you. Number three, talking about the relationship too soon. So you did it. You made your ex miss you by pulling away for a certain period, and now you are finally going to see them. If you feel anxiety coming over you, no worries, this is normal. In fact, if I tell you to be yourself and act normal, it will not help you. So the only thing I will advise you is to avoid talking about the relationship, initiating a discussion about what went wrong, and wanting to resolve their problems then and there. That is absolutely wrong, and by doing so, you will most likely initiate an argument, and you will bring back the negative emotions you both felt when things between you ended. Of course, if you continue seeing each other, and you both agree that you want to get back together, then the what went wrong text has to happen. But just not yet. Not on your first date, at least. Now, if your ex brings up the topic first and starts talking about it, then it is okay to have that conversation. Remember that going no contact from your end was all about making them see their mistakes and realize that they want to be with you again. So if the no contact period was enough for them to think about what has happened and they want to talk to make things right, you should let them. But you bringing up this topic while they are still deciding and are not sure how they feel will only pressure them and cause them to back away once again. So, for the first few calls, texts, and even meetups, keep things cool and casual until they are ready to take you back and trust you again. With the no contact rule, it is more often about what you do after rather than during. While the period still lasts, you should not contact them or reply when they do. But once this period is over, and you reestablish a connection with your ex again, be wary of ruining your progress by making these rookie mistakes. One of my female friends just recently went through a breakup with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend stood up in front of her and said, I'm breaking up with you. Her heart dropped. It was like a dagger stabbed her in the heart. She felt ugly 
insecure, and sad all the time. She felt devastated. She had no idea the relationship was on the brink of breaking up. The next week she spent in bed crying over him. All she wanted was for everything to be back to normal again and his arms wrapped around her. She wanted him back and she started becoming a little desperate. She tried becoming more sexual with him, tried making him jealous with other men, and even no contact without it working at all. It actually pushed him more away than getting him closer. Then she learned a couple of simple psychological triggers that work on all men. The way she would win her ex back was to use these psychological triggers in the right order at the exact right time over a couple of weeks. A couple of times per week she would feed her ex these psychological triggers in person, through text, and on social media. At the same time as winning her ex back, there was another man. She had had a crush on him for years, and he just got single. This guy was everything she wanted, but he was never interested in her like that. Well, what if she tested these psychological triggers on her crush as well? After a week of dripping these psychological triggers into the guys in her life, nothing new happened, but she could instantly see that these triggers started changing their behavior. At the end of the month, she had both men standing in line wanting her. At the drop of a hat, she was the one with all the control. She had finally gained her power back, felt more confident, strong, sexy, and in control than ever before. Now she knew exactly how she could get men to chase her, and she would use these psychological triggers to build a stronger and better relationship than before because she didn't know what men actually secretly wanted. I don't know whether you want to learn these simple psychological triggers or not. If you want to learn what they are, you might want to click the link in the description now. You don't need to click the link in the description now. It's just that you'll learn exactly how to get men to chase you, even if you think all hope is lost. It's truly something to check out. If you're running out of options and you have no idea what to do right now, click the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel because you'll get notified of every new Modern Love Potion video. If you're having troubles with love and men, you should watch our three best videos by tapping the screen now. They might solve your love problems instantly, kind of like drinking a Modern Love Potion that will make him fall at your feet. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.